Dipset, Jones, R.I.P. Easy E, Capo, Dipset, We riding at Westside, Eastside, and no seeds in our stress. Let's ride, Jim Jones swerving. I got that purple, I'm blow. Tight grip on the Escalade pole. Yeah, all of You logged in to strictlyhiphop.com. I'm here with SI. He's going to tell us today about his new book that he got coming out and a bunch of other ventures and things that he has going on. So right now, I'm going to let him take the platform. And uh, SI, give him a little introduction of who you are for the people who might not know who you are and what you have going on with your new book. What's up, Cheddar? What's up, StrictlyHipHop.com? It's SI. Uh, my real name is Garland Tyree, but everybody know me as SI. Um, right now, I'm working on several things, but uh, presently, I got a book out under my published company, Real Right Publishing. It's called The Tradeway. It's about a, a gang leader that receives a seven life sentences in the feds. And um, while he's there, he sit there and restru he's restructuring his organization with the help of a lot of his soldiers and his OGs and stuff. It's a real good read. It's very realistic. And um, those who've been around, they're going to see a lot of stuff that's uh, pretty much familiar to them. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So the name of the book is The Treyway, and they can get it. Uh, we're going to give you all the information at the end. You will be able to see all where you can find the Treyway book from um, SR. So you from Staten Island. How long have you been writing books? Like, how, When did you start? What year, really, did you start writing books? Uh, I'm from Staten Island. I uh, wasn't born here. I was born in Jersey, but I was raised here most of my life. You know, um, I went away. I did some time in the state, then I did some time in the feds. While I was sitting in the feds, I had a conversation with a good soldier, a man that um, helped guide me a lot named Turf. He's from over there in um, Marcy Projects. And we was talking about these all these urban novels put out by various people and how unrealistic they are and how you got 16-year-olds control, 16-year-old girls controlling the drug industry and a million murders and no police, but the lifestyle we lead, or should I say led, we know that's not real. So we decided, yo, what if we sit down and put some stuff down that's realistic? And that was just the seed that was planted. That was in uh, uh, 2009, and um, MDC uh, shoot, the Metropolitan Detention Center, federal. That's like a federal spot. And then um, after I left him, C was planted already. Right. One day, I was sitting in the shoe, about to go to the special management unit. Just finished reading a, a good book, and I liked it. wasn't a novel, though, but I liked the way it was written. And I just jumped up and started writing. And from there, more and more books just came. Okay, that's what's up. So he has inspiration. You heard, it, you heard it right here. He has inspiration. He's been writing for a while. So my next question is, I read a lot of novels. I read, let me say, I don't have time to read now, and I will get to yours eventually. Um, but, you know, being incarcerated, you get a chance to read, you know, a lot. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, you should be reading. So I'm sure you read a lot of novels. Who, what were some of the novels that you read that, you know, kept you, you know, and the authors that kept you, you know, kept your mind going and inspired you to write and gave you, you know, tutelage towards what you were writing with your books? I'm not really big on urban fiction. Right. Like I said, a lot of it is just out of whack. Like they, the Donald Goins yeah. is. Well, the Donald, right. the Donald Goins and stuff, he was a special. Right. He's probably the best that ever did it. Okay. You know, I, I like the coldest winner ever. And um, associate of mine, Anthony Fields, he wrote a book called, uh, he wrote a series called, um, he wrote a series called, uh, um, the Ultimate Sacrifice. He also wrote Angel for Terry Woods. His stuff is stuff I read that I like and inspired me on this level, right? But um, I'm more of a biography type of dude. I read basically everything is about the Panthers. I read, I mean, I personally have a library of over 300 books, all read. I, you know, I like a lot of stuff dealing with the gang culture, dealing with the revolutionary culture, you know, business books and all that. So after you came home from your incarceration, what you know, what were the steps that you had to take? Was it hard for you know for the people who were coming up? What steps did you take to get your book started? And you know, what were some of the processes you had to go through? See, I was focused. I knew that 
there's no going back for me. I knew going back meant a life sentence, you know. So while I was in there, I saved money. When I came home, I had a lot of friends that assisted me, you know. And um, I sat down while I was still in the federal halfway house, filed my LLC paperwork, formed the company, because you got to get the business structure first. Um, with the help of uh, my homegirl, Sexy, Deborah Cardona, we got the book typed up because, like I said, this was written while I was in shoe and in a special management unit. No typewriters, no nothing. It was all handwritten on typing paper, right? And um, once I got that and got it formatted and got the cover done by a brother out here from Staten Island named Cause the Dawn, and um, the rest was easy, just getting it printed up. Right, right, right. So you had a lot of support, which is important for anybody, you know, so, you know, anybody doing anything, not just coming home from prison, but in any situation, it's important to have a good support, support system around you. That, that, you know, that's very, very important. So um, what I also saw recently was that you made a post about the book Tradeway being banned in certain Department of Correctional Facilities. And speak a little bit about that and how you feel about the banning of the book. Well, the banning of the book, I mean, I kind of expected it to happen in certain places. I knew, you know, certain people, you know, like I said, I've been there 18 and a half years of my life. I know how that place goes. I know certain things they're not going to allow. Now, this book right here, it deals with a fictionalized gang, right? But these people, when they're so scared, right, so scared that people are going to read stuff like this and be inspired and stuff and... Like I said, a lot of this is showing people, a lot of this book is with this guy, the, the protagonist, turning his gang into something productive. I won't say positive because positive is your perspective, but, but definitely productive. And they don't want that. They'd rather people just run around. They don't mind. If this was on some ignorant stuff, if it was some mafia book and all that, you know, just talking about all that, they wouldn't care. But because of that, they banned it. The place that banned it was the state of New Mexico. They banned it all the way through. I can't send it to no prisons over there. In the federal system, I had a couple of rejections from certain places and stuff. And um, now Attica banned it. Attica, wow. Yeah, Attica, uh, they sent me a review thing where, to give them credit, they actually read through it. They read through it, cited the pages they didn't like, so on and so forth. And uh, they said it promotes gang activity and can um, cause the formation of a gang or, or, or gang-like organization while in there. Mind you, this is all fiction, so it's just as simple as if a person wrote a book about a rape team or a murdering team, same thing, those books would never be banned, but your book was banned, but it's fiction. Yeah, you got to understand, though, there's right. always going to be a difference with us. You know, anytime we do something, it's going to always be looked at different. If I was a James Patterson writing about serial killers, they'll let it in all day. They ain't going to say, oh, someone might become a serial killer or anything like that, but when it comes to this... That's expected, though. You know, my mom raised me right. She always told me, I'm never going to get a fair shake in this country. So I just try harder and push harder. That's real. That's real. So what's the name of some of the um, other books you got coming out? Like other titles, books, movies? I know you sure got a lot and all of that. You have yeah. a lot of stuff. My next book that's set to be released is called Omar's Redemption. And it's uh, dealing with a rat, really. It's about a rat that was selling weight in the hood. And it goes on how people whisper about him and so on and so forth, but still deal with him. It shows like what's really going on in this in the hood right now. Mm -hmm. It got those that's uh, sitting there hustling him. You got actual gangsters protecting him, mm -hmm. but at the end they get burnt for messing with him. Wow. And um, Omar, Omar starts seeing some of the wickedness of his ways, and he starts to attempt to redeem himself, but. Without giving up the story, we all know there's certain things you do in this life that there's no redemption from. All right, so we got the Trey way right now, Omar's Redemption coming. And um, I got For the Love of Trey also, which is a book about a, a out-of-towner that got caught up in Staten Island. While he's doing his bit, he meets a woman. The woman helps him get out of prison, but now she feels she owes him. Mm. And um, he doesn't violate her, but she's not living the way she want him to live. So she sets out to destroy him and ends up, you know, ends up not working that way. Well, he's working. You got yeah. a lot of things coming, man. That's a good look. And I recently seen you in a, you know, a couple pictures moving around, which is very important. I see you on your grind, you know. But what relationships do you have with, you know, I see you with Jimmy. I see you with, I think Dame had the book, or I'm, I'm be mistaken. I don't know. 
But um, what relationship do you have with artists, and what support are you getting, and you know, how does that how does that work for you? I mean, those that don't know, my name is pretty big. I've been going a long time, but I stay relevant. You know, I have a lot of friends, a lot of active friends that's you know about their business. So through them, I made associations. You know, Capo Jim Jones, that's the homeboy. You got uh, through them Dane. Dane was looking at it for a movie. You know, um, so far we had talked. We had talked about it for a while, but it really didn't pan out that way. You got Waka Flocka who showed me support. Shout out to the homeboy. You know, you got Reek the Villain out of Long Island, and you got my brother Bird Gang Shooter. Hey, that's what's up. That's what's up. So we all getting support for the Treyway book. And what's the name of the publishing company again for the people? Real Right Publishing. Real, and then right as in writing. W R I T E publishing.net is uh, my website. You can also uh, check me out on, on Facebook at Real Right Publishing LLC. That's the business page. And um, the book could also be purchased uh, by um, mailing a money order to Real Right Publishing LLC P.O. Box 010482 Staten Island, New York 10301 The book is $15 plus $2 shipping and handling. Right, you heard him. We're going to definitely put that information on the end as well so people can definitely support, read the book while you're riding the train, going to work, sitting in the crib, you don't got nothing to do, you can definitely get it. So lastly, I want to ask you about uh, movie scripts. How you, are you writing any movie scripts and do you plan on uh, moving over into the industry, since, the music industry, since you have some effects there already as well? As far as the movies go, right? The main purpose of my publishing company, of course, is to make money, right? But also to give a voice to a lot of people behind the wall. So I'm getting, right now I'm getting manuscripts of books, and I'm getting movie scripts from people. You know, they're submitting them, and some of them are all right, some of them need some work, right? But I'm going to work on that. You know, that, that's going to be somewhere I'm going to go into. I'm running around, I'm meeting a lot of directors, a lot of camera people and stuff. A lot of my mans, like I said, they're in the music thing, so they know people, and um, some of them do their own videos, like Shooter. So, yeah, that's something I really plan on doing. Right now, this month, we got a project and shit called uh, Billy Love Volume 1. It's going to be a mixtape. It's going to involve Jim Jones, a lot of my associates, right, and a lot of uh, young and upcoming artists and stuff that's affiliated with me. We're going to put that out, Volume 1, see how we're doing, see how we can spin it off into other things. So basically, as finally, what I want to say and ask is, how do you feel about, because I, you know, you have a lot of knowledge, and you have a lot of knowledge about what's going on in the world, you know what I'm saying? So my thing is, how do you feel of having that knowledge of what's going on today in the streets with the youth, as far as the game, because your books, you know, they deal, deal with gangs in, in the community, in our community. So how do you feel about the gang violence and the issues and the things that are going on in our communities today. What, what are your words to the community and how do you feel about what's going on? There's a saying that goes, ignorance is bliss, which is true. When you don't know what's going on, you can't see what's going on, like it's just regular to you, it's okay, that's how you live your life. But once you gain that knowledge and you see what things are and what they're supposed to be, it starts messing with you. And it's like when a person knows that something ain't right, and he doesn't do nothing, it's the equivalent of being on a train track watching the train come. You just can't do it, you know? And um, I'm working, man. I'm working to try to get people on another page. Like, we grew up the way we grew up. Gangs for us are what fraternities are for people that grow up differently. And I'm trying to get my homies as well as other people's homies to see that, that, yo, this unity is about more than just chilling and drinking, smoking together, and hustling together, whatever. It's about using that unity to better ourselves. You know, they say, oh, you hear people preach all the stuff. Oh, bloods, we about uh, going against oppression. And yeah, it is. It is. That's the purpose. Out in Cali, they was being oppressed by the Crips at one time. Other smaller gangs, they band together. And that's how blood came about. In New York, we is going through it with other organizations. But we're past that now. We crushed all that. And the one oppressor that still remains is the economic oppressor. And that's what we're trying to do now. 
you know, I got some of my, a lot of my homies is on some positive stuff. Like I said, music industry, other things. I even got homies with car dealerships. Mm-hmm. You got uh, homies behind the wall still trying to be active, doing little online businesses and stuff, selling lingerie. Shout out to the homeboy Crook down in Atlanta, mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and I'm proud of the way things are going. As far as the streets go, all I can say is this, man. I can only worry about mine. So all I can say, I can only influence those that go listen. I'm not gonna be out there uh, like like they told Jesus. Why why cast your pearls to swine? I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna put knowledge out there through the books. I'm gonna put it out through the music. I'm gonna talk to people, but I'm not gonna keep doing it, man. At the end of the day, it's about mine. Yo, I got so many homeboys, so many people that show me support. You know, doing time is never easy, but it's a lot easier when you don't got to worry about minor stuff. You know, while I was away, I never had to worry about commissary. I never had to worry about visits. And when I came out here, dudes made my transition easier. You know, I like to shout out the homeboy Capo. You know, Jim Jones, my brother Shooter, Gato, of course my mother. My mother's been my rider in my corner all day. My little sister Grace Rolanda Hodge for never letting me down. Um, my partner Arlene Thomas. You know, we have our ups and downs, but at the end of the day, I know who I could depend on. You know, um, all my homies, man. It's just too many to name, man. Too many well, names. Give me that book one more time. Hold that book up, man. Let's get that close up on that tray. We're going to put up all the info where y'all can get that new book from SI. Make sure y'all go get that. It's a good read, mm-hmm. good reviews. Thank you for coming out, bro. Salute all the time, man. Super hip hop.